Okay, so hopefully you watched the last video in which I kind of explained all this mess. Right now we're going to clear the board and we're going to be dealing with the first two alleged errors. The first one being why has Matthew skipped a name at the end of his third column? And why has Matthew skipped Jehoiakim at the end of his second column? And what we're going to find out is that these two alleged errors are actually going to explain each other. And we're going to be demonstrating this in this video. So let's begin with the first issue of Josiah and Jeconiah. Why has Matthew skipped Jehoiakim? So let's go to Matthew chapter 1 verse 11 in which we read, And Josiah, the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. So in Matthew 1 verse 11, we're clearly told that Josiah is the father of Jeconiah. Okay, let's now go to First Chronicles 3.15, in which we read, And the sons of Josiah were Jehoan, the firstborn, the second Jehoiakim, the third Zedekiah, the fourth Shalom. The descendants of Jeho Jehoiakim were Jeconiah, and his son, Jeconiah his son, Zedekiah his. So in 1 Chronicles 3, 15, 7, we're told that the sons of Jehoziah, one of them was Jeho Jehoiakim, and then Jehoiakim had two sons, one of which was Jeconiah. So it's very clear that Matthew has skipped the name Jehoiakim in his genealogy. So this is the error that we're dealing with. How do we resolve this? Well, I'm going to be heavily relying upon Hagner. And Hagner kind of just presents this problem again. He writes, When at the end of the second group, so here, when at the end of the second group, Matthew says Josiah was the father of Jeconiah and his brothers, he departs from the Old Testament, which indicates that Jeconiah was the grandson of Josiah, but the son of Jehoiakim. And that's what we've shown here. Josiah is the grandson of Jeconiah, but the father, but his father is Jehoiakim. So let's just go back. He departs from the Old Testament, which indicates that Jeconiah was the grandson of Josiah, but the son of Jehoiakim. While Matthew is under no obligation to include every name contained in his source, in this case, the second group may well have originally ended with Jehoiakim. So Hagner is later going to elaborate on this. Basically, his contention is that yes, this is an error. It is a legitimate error, but this error did not exist in the original copy of Matthew. Matthew did not make this error. Rather, this error creeped in through a scribal error. So he argues that the second group may well have originally ended with Jehoiakim. So let's just see what happens if we replace Jeconiah at the end of the second group with Jehoiakim. So let's replace Jeconiah here with Jehoiakim, and let's replace Jeconiah here with Jehoiakim. And if we do that, we no longer have skipped one here. We have Josiah, who was the father of Jehoiakim, which makes sense. Now, if we do this, we now have to put Jeconiah in the third column, in which case this literally moves down, and we put Jeconiah there. And by so doing, we now no longer are missing a generation in the third column, and we have no longer skipped Jehoiakim in the second column. So we have just fixed our problem. I think this is evidence enough that the original copy of Matthew probably looks something like this. But Hagner goes on to present two pieces of evidence that strengthens this position. The first piece of evidence, he writes, quote, This conjecture is supported by the fact that 1 Chronicles 3.15, the brothers of Jehoiakim are mentioned, Zedekiah and Shalom. Whereas in 1 Chronicles 3.16, there is a reference to only a single brother of Jeconiah. What is he saying there? Okay, so in Matthew 1 verse 11, we're told, And Josiah, the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers, plural, brothers. Matthew is saying that Jeconiah has multiple brothers. However, when we go to 1 Chronicles 3, we read, The descendants of Jehoiakim were Jeconiah and Zedekiah, which means that Jeconiah had one brother, Zedekiah. So the fact that Matthew said brothers makes no sense for Jeho Jeconiah. However, if Jeconiah was originally Jehoiakim, this sentence does make sense because we read the sons of Josiah were Jeho Jehoiakim, 
Zedekiah, and Shalom. So Jehoiakim had multiple brothers. So let's just visualize this. Josiah had multiple brothers. Sorry, Jehoiakim had multiple brothers, while Jeconiah only had one. Therefore, it makes no sense for Matthew to refer to the brothers of Jeconiah when Jeconiah only had one. It makes more sense that Jeconiah here was originally Jehoiakim, and in which case the brothers reference makes perfect sense. So that's the first piece of evidence. The second piece of evidence, in my opinion, is even more convincing. He writes, quote, Moreover, Jeconiah's regal name was Jehoiakim, which in the Septuagint is spelled the same as Jehoiakim. So he's saying that in the Septuagint, the Greek spelling of Jeconiah, his regal name, is the same as Jehoiakim. So it's easy why someone would accidentally replace Jeconiah's name with Jehoiakim, especially in Greek, when the names are the same. For some spellings, and they're very similar in others. So the fact that we have similar spelling tells us that, you know, it's, it's clear to see why someone would have made this mistake. Okay. So let's say, all right, what did Matthew's original genealogy look like? So we come to this slide, and this is what Hagner is going to say is what the original genealogy looked like. You know, when the ink was dry, when the ink was dry, when the ink was still wet, rather, when the ink was still wet from Matthew's original document, this is what it looked like. Hagner writes, by this explanation, Matthew has 14 names in each of the three groups. His listing lacks symmetry. What does he mean by that? Okay, so it's obvious that each name, each column now has 14 names, but now the listings lack symmetry, meaning that here we have David mentioned, and here we have David mentioned. There's a nice connection here. The fact that we have Jehoiakim mentioned here, you would expect Jehoiakim to be mentioned up here as well, just like David is here and here, you would expect Jehoiakim to be here and here, but it isn't. Therefore, it lacks symmetry. To this I say, who cares? Who needs symmetry? We just resolved an error. You know, getting rid of the errors is, you know, what we want. We don't really care if there is no symmetry. Symmetry is really of no consequence. But nevertheless, we need to take note of the fact that there is no symmetry. And the slack of symmetry in Matthew's original genealogy is actually going to explain why an error crept in. So Hagner is now going to explain the process by which the error came in. He writes, Some scribe, expecting symmetry in structure, and perhaps confused by the identical Septuagint spelling for Jehoiakim and Jeconiah, Je, Je, Jehoiakim, assumed that the Jeconiah of the beginning of Matthew's third group was also the name which the second group should end, and so changed Jehoiakim, Jeho, Jeho, Jehoiakim to Jeconiah. So basically what Hackner is saying there is that the scribe was reading, was copying down the names. And he saw David here and David here, and he says, you know what, that's, that's quite a nice symmetry. And he also got confused by the similar spelling of Je Jehoiakim and Jeconiah. And he said, you know what, there should really be symmetry in this column as there are in these columns. So he changed Jehoiakim to Jeconiah, and he changed this one too. But in doing so, he didn't realize that he now had screwed up the genealogy. Because now we count Jeconiah here, we can no longer count Jeconiah here. So this Jeconiah goes away, in which case everything gets shifted up, and we now are missing a name in the last column. So this scribe has now messed up the entire genealogy. Yes, it's now symmetrical. Look, you've got David here, David here, and Jeconiah here, and Jeconiah here. But who cares about the symmetry? We now have an error. And that's why, if you open up your Bible today, it has an error there. But Hagner, I think, convincingly argues that that error did not always exist. So let's go back to what ours look like. If you open up your Bible, you're going to see this error. You're going to see that Jehoiakim has been skipped out of the second column, and a consequence of that is that the third column is missing a group. However, if we take Hagner's explanation, there is a way to resolve this, in which everything works perfectly now. And I am very convinced by this argument. So I'm not going to say that these first two issues are errors at all. I think we can give them a tick. I think they can be perfectly resolved. I think it makes perfect sense what's happened. 
So the first two issues are not errors at all, big tick. Now, the second video we're going to do is going to be about the three miss missing generations between Joram and Uzziah. And just, I'm going to give you a bit of a teaser. It's not going to be a nice solution. It's not going to be like this solution. This solution was beautiful. This second video is not going to be that nice. I hope you join me for it. And until then, goodbye.